How do we slow down aging in our face? Hi, I'm Dr. Christina Tanzavati and I'm a double board certified facial plastic surgeon. In my last video, you may have seen in part one, I talked about how our face ages. Now I'm gonna share with you what you can do about it. You heard in the last video, I talked about collagen loss, collagen, collagen, collagen. I repeated myself several times and I'm bringing that back home to talk to you about what you can do to slow down loss of collagen in the skin, in the fat, and in the muscles. So how do we do that? First thing, before I talk about any treatments you can do, is what you can put in your body. I know you've probably heard about collagen supplements. I've heard it too. For a long time, I did not believe in collagen supplements. That will be surprising to you. But besides all the evidence that's out there, a lot of it is case studies, case reports. The problem with collagen supplements is there is not an FDA backed company. There's not a medication, a drug that has gone through scrutiny because there's not money in it. So if you want to try it out for yourself, be my guest, try it. Don't say, say no to it because you heard all these things that there's not enough evidence. The best evidence is on your own self. And I've heard from so many patients when I told them to do collagen supplements and they finally did it, they saw improvements in their skin. I've even had male patients tell me they've had improvements in hair growth. Yes, hair growth. So that's one thing that you can do is adding collagen supplements. It can be in the form of powder. It can be in a capsule. The one that I take is a powder form and the best source is actually an animal source. So if you don't believe me, try it out test it on yourself. And if it doesn't work for you, that's okay. Next step that you could do to help with collagen loss is to look at in each layer what you could do to stimulate collagen in the skin, the muscle, and the fat. So first part is skin. What can we do with our skin? First is skin care. Applying something topically to help stimulate collagen, our first thing that we can use is Retin-A or Retinol. It is a vitamin A product and what it does is it stimulates collagen deep in the dermis by exfoliating the skin, but also increasing cell turnover to stimulate collagen under the skin. That's one. We've used it for many years. It has enough evidence behind it. Our second thing that we can use as a topical agent is vitamin C. Vitamin C is used as a cofactor to producing collagen in the skin. So hand in hand, you should use vitamin A with a vitamin C product topically. The next thing that you could be doing is what you could um, trauma, to, trauma to the skin. Let's just say it this way. When we do tiny traumas to the skin, this is a wounding mechanism we're using to trick our body into creating collagen. If you've ever had surgery or cut or some trauma to the skin, a cut creates some um, scar and that early healing phase, when you feel that scar, it's thickened. It's because the wounding process stimulates collagen to the area by stimulating fibros fibrocytes, what we call cells that uh, lay down collagen in the skin, in the dermis, and by doing so, it helps to close that wound up. The first layer that you have is a type three collagen, and as it matures, you've got more mature type one collagen, and that is what we want to see in our skin. So how we trick that are through treatments such as microneedling. Those are little tiny uh, needles that we introduce here in our office, we can do that. So if you want to do it in the office, what we do here is we're all changing the tip with every patient. It's always a new tip and it's going, uh, has multiple pins in the needle and we're going multiple uh, thousand times actually a minute to traumatize the skin. With that wounding, if we're getting into the right depth, we're causing some bleeding. Why bleeding? Well, the area where we produce collagen is in the uh, papillary dermis, sorry. The papillary dermis is where blood vessels come up to the skin and provide blood supply. That's how we know we're in the right depth. So it's hard to do that at home. That's another reason. When you do these at home devices, if you're not getting to the right depth, you're not gonna get the bleeding that you see to, to make sure that you're gonna get collagen in the skin. And those at home devices just don't go to that depth sometimes. The next thing that we could be doing for our skin is RF microneedling. What is RF microneedling? Now we're stimulating collagen, but with a little bit more energy. What is that with? That's with radio frequency energy that stimulate, that creates heat under the skin. So the needles go down, create the trauma, and then there's heat delivered at the tip of the needles. That heat 
causes neocollagenesis. I know that's a big word, that's a big boy word. What are we trying to talk about? Well, heat will disintegrate the collagen that's there and cause your body to amplify the amount of collagen it's producing. So when you get that, you're not only getting the trauma from the needles, but also the heat through neocollagenesis to create even more collagen. So RF microneedling is a boost over microneedling itself. Besides the skin, uh, these are two of the treatments. What's a step above that is CO2 laser resurfacing. CO2 laser resurfacing goes deep. We have different parameters, but with the CO2 laser, we're creating heat and columns of heat that goes down to the skin, wounding the skin in the same format. We're combining both heat and trauma, like we said, not the needles necessary in this case, but that heat is what is stimulating uh, the body to create new collagen. Thank you for tuning in for more information about how I can help you with your aging process. Follow me at Facelift Expert.